I'm Brian Helmuth. I am lead scientist for Fabian Cousteau's Proteus Project. Um, I'm also a marine biology professor at Northeastern University. I've, I've had the good fortune to have saturated several times in the Aquarius underwater habitat, and so I'm really excited to be part of this discussion uh, about what science and exploration and engagement we can do using saturation diving. Fabian, if you can put up the slides. Um, we'll be joined by Fabian in just a moment. He'll take over the presentation, but if you could do the next slide, please, Fabian. Thank you. So this is really an all-hands-on-deck moment. The, the way we view Proteus is a collaborative engagement where we're bringing in partners um, from across multiple sectors. You can see just a couple of these, and I wish I could tell you more about the other exciting partnerships we have in development. You can see just a sample here. We have everything from the United States National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration to the U.S. Navy um, to multiple universities and private sector partners from around the, the globe. Um, and we're working with them to uh, launch scientific projects now in advance of um, the build of, of Proteus. Um, and while I'm really excited about the science that we can do, what has me really over the moon excited, Fabian, if I get the next slide, is actually the ability to re-engage the public in the ocean. We had the question for the Admiral about why don't we have the equivalent of a space program right now? I mean, I think that is the central question we're getting at. How do we reignite the public's desire and passion for the ocean in ways that really re-envisions that contract between humanity and the ocean? And I love this quote um, by investor Ray Dalio. It says, we need to revive the Jacques Cousteau moment in creating one big wave of excitement and interest among the public in what lies beneath the, the waterline because we know that if humans explore the oceans, we'll love them, and if we love them, we'll protect them. Um, this is at the core of our, our mission. Um, next slide, please, Fabian. And so who better to do this, to stand on the, the shoulders of one of the giants, Jacques-Yves Cousteau, than his first grandson, um, Fabian. Uh, I first got to know Fabian over a decade ago, uh, working on a project, uh, next slide please, Fabian, called Mission 31, where we had a, a, a record-breaking mission that honored his grandfather's con shelf mission that lasted 31 days, and in the process, managed to do approximately three years of research in 31 days using saturation diving. So as an underwater scientist, I'm absolutely convinced of the power of saturation diving to do research that we can do no other way. But it's really the ability to re-engage with the rest of the world that has me I'm so excited, especially as a father of two daughters. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Fabian who will um, finish the rest of the talk and tell you more about Proteus, um, what his vision is for this and where we're headed next. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Fabien Cousteau. Uh, bonjour. Uh, Buonasera. I am uh, a little tired this morning because uh, we started a bit early, so my apologies for dragging on a bit. Uh, it's a five-hour difference here, uh, so it's about four, five o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. Uh, but it's a pleasure to be amongst all of you. Uh, and as Brian mentioned, uh, we had the unbelievable privilege to uh to participate in missions at aquarius now uh for those of you who don't know who i am uh, um just a brief uh message uh or history um i am the third generation uh in my family to uh be an ocean explorer a uh, documentary filmmaker and ocean conservationist and throughout that journey have had the unbelievable privilege to meet folks like yourselves uh, and participate in various uh, uh, projects, uh, including, and maybe most importantly, one that I had a chance to lead over at Aquarius called Mission 31, as Brian had mentioned. Now, Mission 31 uh, had for goal two things. Uh, having been diving since my fourth birthday uh, and having been on expeditions regularly since age seven, uh, I have been able to rub shoulders with giants and greats and pioneers that have been uh, instrumental in the education of my upbringing and the understanding of why ocean is so important. What's always shocking to me, or maybe it's a wake-up call, is that the vast majority of the world doesn't think like here 
at this conference uh, that by and large, even in today's world, even with all the UN and Explorers Club participations that we've had, uh, the the world does not seem to understand that this life support system that we love, that we cherish, that we take advantage of, isn't necessarily one that we also revere as such. And so, as explored ocean, sure, simply weren't possible up until now. Now, Mission 31 had two goals, as I mentioned. Uh, one of them was, do people still care about the ocean? Do, does the average person really understand and care about that? And number two, how much science can we do from an undersea habitat? Mission 31 was the longest ever mission at Aquarius. 31 full days uh, in saturation. Uh, six of us, uh, which is the maximum occupancy of uh, Aquarius. And despite its uh, antiquity, now 38 years old, uh, happy birthday, Aquarius, uh, we were able to uh, do and generate over three years worth of equivalent scientific research in those 31 days because it's such a unique tool. And I am a big proponent of all tools and the right tools for the right reasons and the right kinds of research, boats, submersibles, AUVs, ROVs, uh, you know, diving, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But being in saturation at the world's final frontier gives us an opportunity that uh, gives us a human technological interface that none of these others do. And it also allows for us to open up the ocean world in ways that uh, haven't been afforded in many, other, in many other platforms. Now, we were able to reach over 100,000 students live from Aquarius during those 31 days from children in China to a group down in Antarctica to uh, a 5,000-person group in, um, in the Museum of Natural History. And it showed us that people still care. So not only is the science and technology that we were testing and the ability to, uh, to generate that kind of research important, but the ability to reach out to the general public and show them what's going on in the undersea world is equally uh, as important. And one that I'm happy to say was our motivating factor. Now, two years later, in 2016, we decided to start off on a new journey to build the International Space Station of the Ocean. And as you've heard previously, this is... Uh, an ambitious project. This is a project that is necessary, in, at least in, uh, uh, in in the lens I'm looking through, uh, to not only change the course that we've set for ourselves as a species, but to find better ways to live in symbiotic relationship with our life support system. And for goal, we have, of course, to touch and to integrate the science and research, the discovery and exploration, and of course, the global engagement. Proteus, and as you saw in that uh, previous presentation, um, their habitats have, have, are, are not a new thing. Uh, they've been built since the early 1960s, starting, of course, with my grandfather's conch shelf habitats and closely followed by many efforts around the world from um, Sea Lab to Hel Helgeland to uh, La Chalupa to many others. Uh, as a matter of fact, there have been over 72 habitats of various ilk and definitions in history previously. But the purposes, the designs, and the uh, the stays were limited. Uh, Aquarius can only house six people, and technically only for a week or so. As a matter of fact, we found a lot of resistance in doing a full lunar cycle in Aquarius. And so Proteus is based on the successes of past pioneers while addressing all the frustrations and shortcomings of the time. And this includes the modularity built into the externals and internals of the structures. And I'm not going to walk you through all those details because you've heard details from uh, the previous speaker 
uh, to those things. But these are all fundamentals and necessary to be able to evolve, to be able to uh, to change and expand as the needs be, as the technologies advance. And so you can imagine building something uh, of a smaller footprint uh, for local needs to much more comprehensive uh, habitat in order to cater to longer missions and larger communities to do more extensive work. And of course, to integrate all the safeties necessary to make sure that its inhabitants and participants are uh, safe, sound, and can be efficient, uh, much more so than on land. Uh, if you look at uh, mission 31, that three years of the equivalent research is about a 30 to one ratio, leveraging that coefficiency of time that's so frustrating when diving from open circuit, at least frustrating to me, when diving from the surface down and, and finding the limitations. Now, I mentioned the modularity aspect, but uh, this isn't about a single habitat. This is about an entire ecosystem that accomplishes a better understanding of various layers of the ocean for a more complete dynamic picture. And that starts from, of course, the, the mission control module on land to the communication system that uh, some of our partners, such as NOAA and the Navy, use, the satellites and, and things like that, to, of course, deeper water sections of this underwater community. And of course, we'll be able to leverage other technologies, uh, AUVs, ROVs, of course, submersibles to be launched from Proteus, uh, to be able to be transport for uh, goods as well as personnel as, as those things uh, are required. Uh, ultimately, the, uh, the Proteus uh, modularity will be continually upgradable for for the future needs. Exchange sections to add new groups uh, to give you an idea of the footprint we're talking about. Aquarius is about 400 internal square feet. So for, for six people for uh, an extended period of time, that's a bit tight. And we've found many advantages and disadvantages from our experiences. And so Proteus is scheduled to be, or at least the first of our Proteus is scheduled to be about 10 times the size of Aquarius in order to be able to accommodate twice as many people for extended, if not infinite, periods of time, depending on human physiology and, of course, the psychological parameters, which are equally as important. And because we want to make this as efficient as possible, we're talking about an air environment at three atmospheres for the majority of the participants. Now, of course, the deeper water habitats are in mixed gases, and there are redundant systems in both of these, including the proximity to each other in case of any kind of emergency, along with uh, secondary and tertiary backup systems for life support, for power, and, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the internals of Proteus and the entire ecosystem will also address some of the issues that we're seeing on land and will be transferable as they are experimented on and perfected, including, of course, hydroponic gardens, growing our own food, having the closed loop system so that we don't affect the external ecosystem so that we can live in more symbiotic relationship with that ocean world. And that multi-purpose facility, of course, will be addressing all sorts of things in terms of state-of-the-art research and communications. Imagine, for example, being able to have this community to cater to not only scientists and researchers, but also as a training ground for astronauts and aquanauts. Uh, imagine a platform that's welcoming to academia, to educators, to students, and of course, the Hollywood creative platform that's integrated in the communication system, which caters to all sorts of things, including bringing back that crucial data uh, not just raw data, but process data to advance engineering, robotics, and innovations that uh, will, will be available in just a couple of short years when Proteus is installed in our favorite jurisdiction. Now, one of the uh, aspects that we want to make sure uh, happen is that we have candidates of the utmost qualifications 
so that they can not only be able to enjoy the comfort and the luxuries that that uh, Proteus uh, offers, but also that we are able to cater to a vast majority of divers that are not necessarily trained to be saturation divers. And so the program would include uh, several different aspects, several different levels of training, including hard hat training for the initiates, all the way through uh, saturation diving with rebreathers so that we can have extended range or the rangers, so to speak, including, of course, the use of DPVs and such. But as you add layers of complexity, as all of you know, uh, those add layers, of course, of risk. And we want to make sure that those folks are absolutely trained. But it does allow the ability to train your average researcher with a uh, recreational or advanced dive certificate with enough hours under their belt to progress in that training program so that those different tools are afforded to them down the road. Allowing a private aquanaut program for may not have the audience but have the ability and willingness to participate in scientific research programs. So we have a private Aquanaut program that will become available very shortly in the next few months. Uh, of course, if you want to hear more about that, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, Brian is in the audience and uh, I believe Hugo is somewhere around. And of course, the rest of our team is at your disposal. Now, I mentioned a favorite jurisdiction. Uh, there are actually several, but we have an agreement with the government of Curacao uh, and by default, the government of, Har of Holland. So that will be our first site for building projects in just two years. Uh, the government of car uh, development off East Point, which uh, is uh, home to the one of the last our social good enterprise. And that gives us access to a coral reef ecosystem that's rich, that's biodiverse, that has uh, topography that's conducive to a whole variety of resources research in barriers. It's an ideal situation for our goals. And we're extraordinarily blessed to have those partnerships and those licenses. And one final note, uh, we talk about exploration, we talk about uh, research, we talk about all those exciting things uh, that make us addicted to the ocean world. Uh, but let's not forget that there are less than about 13,000 people, uh, globally speaking, that are trained in technical diving every year. That's 13,000 people out of 7.8 billion. About 1,300 of them are trained in, uh, in advanced technologies such as rebreathers. So the demographic is very small that gets to enjoy the undersea world past the 5% that we know. And it's with that in mind that we need to be able to reach out to the entirety of the planet to be able to connect with the undersea world in ways that are fundamentally important for decision making in our future if we're to envision a planet in which we still live in. And it's with that that I say that uh, we're officially uh, announced uh, Proteus back in uh, 2020 during COVID, which was not planned. And despite the fact that we were not planning on having an official uh, PR campaign, we were able to garner over 25 billion media impressions and uh, have over 750 media outlets worldwide that were interested enough to tell our story and the journey of building and installing Proteus and looking forward to executing mission one, end of 2026, beginning of 2027. And so it's with that, that I will uh, leave you with something that my grandfather used to tell me all the time when I was a kid. And you see my friends throughout the, uh, the, the day, uh, the ocean uh, has some good stories to tell. But at the end of the day, we have to look at ourselves and ask why we're doing this. What's the most important thing to all of us? Is it creating 
uh, a, a business ecosystem, or is it creating a platform to generate solutions so that we can give back to our future generations what we've taken for granted to make sure that our children and our grandchildren are better stewards of our planet than we've been. Well, I want for one believe that it's both. And with a platform like Proteus, we're able to tackle that and to join the forces with all sorts of other folks such as yourselves and others to be able to generate a better future and a better planet in better state than we found it. And so that's our biggest gift to humanity and to the future of our planet. People.